Welcome, everybody. I am your host, Scott Patton. Joining us, as usual, is health coach Martin Batella, life enthusiast. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Oh, suffering the effects of having had some tomatoes. So my huh. skin is not its usual healthy thing. It's amazing, you know? Like, I get reminded, uh, let me say it this way, I get tempted like everyone else, and then I do the thing that I probably shouldn't have... Uh, on a resilient day, it might have passed, but on a day that's already marginal, or if I'm already challenged in some way, I take myself over the threshold and the trigger triggers and uh, up she goes. So I'm feeling the inner friction. It's really interesting how even with all the knowledge I have, with all the education I took, I still... I'm just a regular human with temptations. And I was telling my wife, so let's just go for it. What the heck? Let's pretend it's an Italian holiday. Let's have it. Well, anyway. And then you suffer. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely not as good as I was, say, a week ago. Yeah. And that's part of life, being up and down, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And some of it, I'm just conscious of just how I caused this myself. Right. And you know what? I think that's a real key because uh, you can take responsibility or not. And mm -hmm. when you don't, it really makes life hard because it's not my fault. I just ate like I normally ate. And now today I've got pain and then zits and red face and I feel terrible and I'm miserable. Yep. As opposed to, I know when I eat the tomato, uh, it's going to be a tough couple of days afterwards. But I yeah. wanted the tomato, right? Yeah. Cool. So we have a, a really interesting um, comment. It's not really a question, but I think we can comment on the comment. Uh, from the fibromyalgia group, I'm not going to say the name. Normally, we like to just recognize it. But it's a name that's so unusual that everyone would know. We want to keep everyone's privacy. And here it is. It's really hard living with family who don't understand you're sick and aren't normal like them. I, they, I look normal. I don't have a broken arm, uh, but I am ill. I have a problem. I have a disease, a dis-ease, uh, but everyone thinks that I'm lazy. Everyone thinks yeah. that I'm just trying to get out of doing my okay, job. So let, yeah, let me just butt in here with something. So this fibromyalgia business is a metabolic disease. So it affects the mitochondria in your cells. And when the cells, when the mitochondria do not produce enough energy, it's usually because there's not enough oxygen coming in or some other dysregulation there. So on the surface, everything looks just fine. You do not look any worse for wear. You could be the... A hot sexy thing or the strong brownie thing or whatever you want to be on the outside it looks just fine on the inside it's not well you could feel like there's fires burning or you could feel like there's just no spark whatsoever that you just can't get yourself out of bed or off of the chair or whatever it's definitely highly possible so the family, right? The support team, the people that are with you. You look normal. To them, you look like a lazy bum who's refusing to pull their weight. And there's just no way for them to experience it unless you take a hammer and whack them on the toe every morning just to say, just so you remember what I feel like. That's right. Yeah. So, Martin, how... How can someone like talk with their family and, and help them to understand what the situation is? Well, I think the justification, the validation has to be somewhere in the place of, please understand that I have a metabolic disease, right? Like look up metabolic disease, watch some videos, play it to your family and just say, look, I actually have this metabolic disease. Mine is a chronic fatigue. I look fine on the outside, but the inside is not working like yours. Right. 
and they need to be reminded of it all the time. I, d I don't know how else, right? Because you truly will appear to be like a whining loser who just keeps asking them to help you rather than you carrying the weight. That's what it will look like. Do you think, Martin, it would help if there was if you if they described it to the family? They said, "Listen, today, like I got tingling on my fingers," or yeah, but you do you keep doing it year after year after year. It's time for you to get over it, right? And uh, honestly, that there is a way over it. You know, I, I want to tell you that if you don't know my story, you can go on Life Enthusiast and hear me tell it or read uh, read the article, whatever. Just in shorthand, as I was a healthy 24-year-old, at 25, I had a bunch of mercury put in my mouth. And the next 10 years, I went downhill and I kept going downhill. Like I was a crippled 35-year-old. And then, only then, it took me 10 years to wake up from the hypnosis of believing in the goodness of doctors and the goodness of the medical system and thinking that they actually know what they're doing. Turns out they don't. So long as you keep going there, you will be following my example of getting going downhill. So finally at 35, I had this meeting with myself, which was, if you carry on like this, you'll be dead in two years, probably by suicide. But anyway, uh, I decided to turn it around which meant study. That was long before the internet came about. So that was books and library. And I read a lot and I figured it out. And I figured out, A, that the entire medical system is upside down because they only chase symptoms, never the causes. Then I figured out what my cause was. Your cause may be different from mine. So you need to find your cause. And then I figured out that I had genetic problems they are specific. I'm a poor methylator, so I had to compensate for that. And then the next few years, by the time I was 45, I was stronger than my 35-year-old self. And I was pretty much living a full life. That's about the time I started this online business. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that I was a disaster I was not able to pull my weight and I was going downhill. The only way I think will work for anyone to have a successful story is to stop thinking that somebody else can do it for you. It is up to you individually to make a decision to change. And the change will be in changing many things. And you need to figure out stagnation, trauma, toxicity, and malnutrition. Those are the things that you have control over. You have no control over your genetics. You have no control over uh, what your family members, relatives, whatever, think. The, the stuff you can control is what you put in you and what you take out of you and how you react to the inputs. I promise you, it's not easy, but at the same time, it's gratifying, fulfilling. And for the majority of us, it's a better place than where we were when we started, right? I mean, if you're yeah. in pain, uh, I guess the good news is your body can heal it. Yeah, so maybe, just maybe, if you are seen as somebody who's trying was doing something, then you will be perceived in a better light than someone who's just sitting there waiting to be helped. Right. It's a tough I hope one. It doesn't hurt too much. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a tough one because it's family, it's also workers, co workers, bosses, doctors, all of it. All of it. They're all because it's when you were talking, it reminded me of an apple that has a bruise, right? The apple yeah. has a bruise, but you don't really notice it because the covering covers it and doesn't really look any different oftentimes. Yeah. It's and all brown on the inside, inside, right? 
small brown on the inside. It's like, oh, this thing's bruised. And uh, and that's what we are. We're like bruised apples. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't let I, anyone take a bite out of you. Yeah. I saw one lady. She started using a cane. Not that she needed it, but she just simply walked around with a cane all the time. And she was given a greater, I don't know what. Respect. Um, yeah, well, yeah, tolerance, right? Like she was given a, a bit more room to be herself. Right. Yeah. Coping mechanism. So if you have any ideas on uh, how you, or if you would like to share how you handled your family's reaction to you having fibromyalgia, put it in the comments below because yeah. that's something we all need to uh, to hear from, from you from. Yeah. No, yeah, one working. more thing on the topic. It's usually not about them. It's probably about you. Can you clarify really? that? Well, um, they they look at it. They look at others without really trying to get into their shoes, right? Like it's really hard. Well, I don't know about hard. It's not common for us to daily to try and put ourselves into the shoes of the others. Right. And it helps a lot, right? And that's probably what they are not doing. They're not trying to see it from your perspective. They're just seeing it from theirs. Right. And I think you made a good point when you said, you know, be seen to be trying to put out an effort, right? If they just feel like all oh, every time I see you, you're laying on the couch with a bag of Doritos watching Netflix, like, yeah, it, it's not a good look. Whereas if you make an attempt to help out, even in small things, then it might help. Yeah. And of course, I know that you can't get out of the house when you are so tired. But listen, for example, MSM, methylated sulfur, is going to help you with your energy. All you have to do is just hear it, figure it out. Oh, just, oh my Lord, it only takes two teaspoons of sulfur in water every day, not sulfur, sulfur, MSM, to improve your oxygen processing capacity. And that's 50 cents worth of sulfur. It's not like you're in horrendous economic distress because of it. Right. Good advice, Martin. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time. Make sure you leave some comments. Let us know what you think and how you deal with your family and, and other people with this, with this problem. Yep. Bye for now.